Call us on your cell phone. Call in Mary Hotline Bling. That can only mean one thing. Welcome to it. It's officially that time. Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting. ting, ting. ting. Love it. Everyone getting involved. We love this part of the show. Okay. Neil Anthony joining us and the lovely Anel Bolkhitre. Some interesting questions this morning, guys. Welcome, welcome, Very welcome. Interesting. interesting smells roaming Very about the studio as well this morning. It's been amazing. Listen, um, <laughs> let's get into our first viewer question. Um, Peter, he phoned us. Do we have a Peter on the line? Pistol Pete. No Pete on the line, but he says, I'm looking for a great tripe Ooh, recipe. Something that would scare the heebie-jeebies out of a lot of people. Okay. Once it's not almost set up a but come do it. A great tripe recipe, guys. What do you have? I get the microphone for Ogan, so please pass up. I'm going to sing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Pass up now. Singing the tripe song. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with curry tripe. We loved it. So yeah. my mom used to take the 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 pins any mm. poikies, you know, because okay. tripe is the stomach. Is it what they say? Is it is it pins and poikies yeah. or is it afal? Pins and poikies is your pins and poikies, and the afal slide on the brain and all is in. Mm. Yeah, look. Yeah, look. I have one of these. Spongy. I said it all is in a stew pot with curry, coriander, a bit of pepper, a bit of um um. A bay leaf, cinnamon and acai in salt. In our stomach, it's over a half hour or so. In our hoeke, our tapos bay. How come my microphone fast? Let's go feel fast, I don't. But if you upskip, and then is it the year? My upskip, my microphone. Yeah. The year. The tongue there as well. Beautiful. A bit of a poiki. Ah, say. And it is iets traditioneels. I mean, in South Africa, is that us carry that. And in the Italianers, make it with tomato, for example. And on Patay, means it is wit. And you, why do you like to um, That's blanquettes. That's the, the, the veal blanquettes as well in, in France, which is quite nice. Um, I like more of a sort of heavier braise. I'm more the sort of, I would then sort of pressure cook it, then pick off all the meat and then reduce it. Okay. Um, it's actually quite nice with lobster as well. Look, it's, uh, well, yeah. really, there we yeah. go. Tripe Look, it's, it's quite a process. And when it comes to, I think, when it comes to something like, you know, tripe, it's, it's, a, it's an acquired taste mm. as well. It really is. You know, I'm, I'm old and wise enough to know that I don't eat liver and I don't <laughs> eat tripe. You know, it's two of those things. Anything else I'll go for. Yeah. But I know that the preparation method is very, very important yes. when it comes yeah. to this. My yeah. mom always sends my dad outside mm. to do that. So yeah. is there any specific tip that you can give on the preparation of tripe to make it, you know, but more easy going. Yeah, the thing is, tripe needs to be slow cooked. It's, it's a tough um, yeah. a part of the beast. Okay. So it needs to be slow cooked, or it needs to go to a pressure cooker. <laughs> yeah, and the, wash that it. Is, and also give it a give it really, really good wash as well. You can yeah. also leave it overnight in a bit of water with a bit of vinegar in, and that takes away a bit of its aroma. Yeah. As well. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I love how Anel put it for us. It's a, it's a <laughs> tough part of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough part of the beast. Are you a tough beast? It didn't look like this. You're a tough beast. No except idea. When it comes to tripe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mush. I'm mush. Listen. Give us a shout, 083-913-3728. That is the number. The culinary hotline is open. Give us your best shot. Catch the foodies out this morning. We'd love to connect with you. Jumping back into the kitchen um, for our culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. Get involved. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, cool. So this is the part of the show where we <laughs> take your questions and we try and decipher them and help you out a little bit at home in your kitchens. Neil Anthony joining us in studio and also the Lieflika Anel Portgieter. Right. So, um, guys, we have got a question from Geraldine. She wants to know how to get the skin off the tomato. She does the hot water thing, the cold water yeah. as well, but the skin still doesn't come off neatly. So how do you do that? That's an interesting one. Um, so the best way to do it if you're doing the sort of blanching, which is the hot water into the ice water, is to give, an, give your tomato a nice score on the bottom and on the top. Then just into your boiling water, then you can actually watch it, you'll see the skin start to come off, and then just straight into ice cold water, and then, then they, just, I mean, they just peel right off, you know what I mean? You can take a little knife if you want to and give you a little hand, but I mean, it's really just sort of watching it. And making sure That's that it's... Easy. And look at yeah. that! It's the ice cold water to stop the cooking process. Yes. Okay. Definitely. So, what, you can, what you can do as well is if you're feeling brave and if you have a, uh, if you have like an industrial strength blowtorch. Okay. Just do the same thing, crisscross it and then just blowtorch them. Is that your quick version? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just like playing with the blowtorch. So actually, I that's the only reason. I would love to know how you figured that one out. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey man, I don't really have much to do. These guys are still on their mains. Let's skin a tomato using a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Okay. It happens. Okay, listen, the life of a chef is very exciting. Mm. Um, Sharifa Smith says, hi guys, how do you measure butter by spoon? For instance, if a recipe asks for two tablespoons or a cup of melted butter. Please guys, I need some help. Uh, number I'll one I'll it. say is melt the butter yeah. and then put it in a tablespoon or put it in a yeah. in a cup. 
But is it a uh, is it a rounded one? Is it a flat one? Is it no? Well, a cup is two hundred fifty grams, so you yeah. can also weigh that out. Okay. Or two hundred and fifty milliliters. Yeah. And if you want two hundred and fifty milliliters, the easy way to do it is like, like in, in scientific. Um, displacing volume. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. I would you say you put this Long on a cup here yeah, and you say you want a quarter cup, then you fill it up until it's one cup and a quarter. Yeah. And the the, the the volume of the water will show when it's like one cup and a quarter or one and a half cup, and yeah. that is your volume of butter then. And then what, do you take the butter out and use it? Yeah. Or is yes. this just an experiment? <laughs> it's, 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 it's for practical purposes. It's right? for practical purposes. Yeah. You take it up and then you use it for baking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So make sure your water is not hot. Because yeah. that'll, really, that'll really mess it up. <laughs> I thought you'd give us a great old science experiment no, just, no, to, no, 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 just no. to prove a point. No. Okay, no. I love that. This but is I'm, a measuring, uh, old fashioned okay. measuring so, tool. Okay, so, so just the quick go to guide. We have a spoon that said yeah. please use a tablespoon of butter. Yeah. I'm going to go in, I'm going to dig it out. How much is this on there? That's 15 mils normally is a it table, 15 mils? Yeah. tablespoon. It's normally 15 mils. Terribly exciting. From yeah. torching tomatoes to making <laughs> butter floats in water to get the measurements. Man, hey, never are, we, moment, yeah, are we even in the culinary hotline right now? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> All right. We're going to continue with uh, answering your questions in just a little bit. Having so much fun. And I'll put together Neil Anthony joining us in the studio. <laughs> it's my feel good. Call us on your cell phone. Culinary hotline bling. That can only mean one yep, thing. There we go. Culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. Got it. The whole studio let us down this morning. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Yeah, they made us sleep. Man, love it. It's all our game show here. Okay. <laughs> Listen, okay, cool. So we, we answering some of your questions. Thank you very much for all the questions that you guys have posed. Um, here's an interesting one. Uh, Ashika Manipasat Moodley says, wow. Morning, you awesome bunch. Please, can you help me out? I made peanut brittle and it didn't harden. Is there any mm. way that I can fix it? So so this is what we want. Peanut yeah. brittle and must ugh, snap like that. that okay. <laughs> that was good. I, Did you eat your spinach yeah. this morning? <laughs> no, I didn't. No. That was a good peanut brittle, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. Delicious. How do you get it to that? Um, peanut brittle is sugar and a bit of water that you melt and you let it come to caramelized stage and it's around about 150 degrees till it's like an amber beautiful mm. color. Okay. Um, what I normally add then is a bit of butter and a bit of baking soda but today we're just doing that. You can just mm. do it plain. Just sugar. Yeah. And yeah. you can add some um, chilies or you can add some spices whatever you like flavor. Yeah. And then you just pour this in the nuts of your choice as well. You just pour this over your nuts. Okay. Careful. It's warm. Yeah, yeah. It's very hot. Very hot. <laughs> and let it sit. <laughs> okay. That is the easy way of making peanut brittle. So, so in, just to just to go back to mm. her question, Ashika's question, why don't you think that her brittle hardened? Yes. It, didn't it didn't come harden. up to the right stage because it needs to come to yeah. it like a, they call the, it a hard ball oh, stage. Oh, the temperature of the actual yeah. sugar. Yeah. yeah. And how to test it if you don't have a um, um, temperature meter is to have a little bit of cold water on the side and you pour a bit of sugar yeah. in there and make sure that the ball comes like quite hard. Yeah. And then you pour it over. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. There we go. Well, I do hope that <laughs> that answered your question. Thank you very much. Another one here. Um, Dawn Aronson says, Hi, Espresso family. I have a question. Mm. Um, why does my sponge cake flop in the middle? How can it be corrected? What am I doing that is causing this? Uh, it's cooked through. Just a ho It's just hollow in the middle. Thanks for hollow the advice. Hollow in the middle. So it's sort of, it'll cook in the outside. Then it looks like in it's flopping middle. inside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yet again, you know, test it. Make sure your recipe is right. Make sure you got your, your ratio is right um, your your mixture needs to basically be imperfect before you bake it obviously put into a preheated oven if it's sort of if the oven has to only come to temperature then you're going to sort of bake the sides and it's going to flop on the inside okay so not baking it for long enough maybe mm. right check the temperature check the recipe check the ingredients you know okay. just just have a play with it all right so so basically here this is a, what is this yeah, a basic so we would, we would, ingredients you know, it's, list it's um softened butter you got your sugar you can either go with the cast sugar or icing sugar I would use self-raising flour, baking soda, your egg yolks, which you can mix through, and then you can whisk your egg whites, fold them through as well. A okay. nice fast bake, and you should mm -hmm. end up with a beautiful risen sponge. Mm. Yeah, but you think the most important thing there is make sure that the, t the temperature of the oven yeah, is preheat the is oven. Preheated, yeah. you know, preheat it's the there. It's 180 or whatever yeah. the case the recipe says. Yeah, and make sure that you get the recipe from a reliable source. That's yeah. another thing. Ah, I see, mm. I see, I see. Unless you're going to invent something like the brownie mm. was by accident, you know, who knows? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, that cool. That worked out for everyone. That worked out for everyone. Years, 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 <laughs> many years, and we're still going to continue eating those brownies. Right, we have one more segment segment left of your culinary hotline. Ting, 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 ting. We'll be back in a bit. It's my feel good show. All 
right, thank you so much, Graham and Nikki Bush, talking about a very, very important topic there. Getting your kids out in nature, man. Getting yes. them to fall in love with nature mm, again and move exactly. away from the technology mm. a little bit. But, um, you know, we want to bring them the kitchen as well. Yeah, cool, man, because <laughs> in the kitchen there's a place for families as well. Exactly. So it is the time for our very last culinary hotline. Bling, ting, ting, ting. ting. Hey. Hey. Yay, there we go, the whole studio, right. Um, answering some of your questions. Thank you very much for all of the questions. So here's an interesting one. Kitty Borne says, Hello guys. Now, when I'm making scones, they turn out hard like biscuits. Mm. What could I have done wrong? Hey, um, scones. 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 Yeah, well, yes. What he's doing wrong with a scone is he's either over mixing it, so mm. he's stretching the glutens in the flour, so they're turning into more sort of biscuits. Okay. Which is what it is. Or the thing is that he's not doing properly is what you need to do in the beginning is take your butter and then rub it into your flour. And then what you want to do is almost leave little specks of butter in the flour because what happens is as they cook, they release the steam. So the little specks of flour, the little specks of butter in the flour yeah. release steam and that sort of puffs it up a bit. So you want to, you know, beautifully rub that butter into your flour so you get that real nice sea sand texture. Okay. How do you use my food processor? This, this or you know it's even better, is a you, mess. you freeze the butter, yes. freeze the butter and then grate it into the flour. Okay, that's yeah, a nice the other That's the best way well. to do it actually. All right, so so you want that kind of a breadcrumb yeah. consistency at the You want the this sort of, of consistency. Yeah. And not oh so over mixing is a no go. Look at that. <laughs> Neil just likes to make a mess. That's Thank what you, you do very yeah. much. That's what you do. <laughs> okay, so this cool. This is the sort of texture you're looking for. You see little specks of butter in there as well yeah. still. And then you and add then the you can pop it into a bowl and add your wet ingredients. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Kelly Borne. Thank you very much. Um, we have another one here. Uh, let me just get this. Sapi Surprise Madeleine Ledwaba. Okay, there Hello. we go. That's Love a mouthful. It. Thank you very much. Um, I always make mistakes when uh, I'm, I'm making putu pup or dry pup in yeah. hashtag. Uh, how can I make my putu pup turn out perfect and also maybe add some flavor mm. twists? What can Ooh. I add? Can I make a dessert out of pup? Okay, let's start with the first question. <laughs> yeah. There's lots oh, of questions. There's a lot of questions, right. So, I love putu pup. I also grew up with it. Yeah. The, that was our breakfast in the morning. Milk and Seiko. Oh, yeah. Yeah. culinary hotline yeah. for you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do first is boil your water, get it to yeah. boiling point. Then say it's about say 500 mils of water, you add 250 mils of um, what, maize meal? Maize yeah. meal, mealy. Yes, yes. Mille. yes. Palenta. And you let it no, put polenta. Polenta. It's not you want it. <laughs> then you let it boil closed for um, about 15 minutes. Then you add an extra bit of uh, so maize meal. Sort of half raw, half cooked, yeah. style, yeah. And then, then you start stirring it until it's that consistency. And then you cook it for about another 15 minutes till it's closed. Mm. Till it's this consistency. Okay. And then it's sugar and milk, guys. Warm yeah. pup and suck it and milk. Caramel pup. Caramel pup. Oh, mm. All right. So, so other flavor variants that you can put in there, maybe just to jazz it up a little bit. What I like to do is like take a tin of sweet corn or millies yeah. or put that in because you are using maize. You know, yeah. it's just like repeating the flavor. So that's something I really enjoy doing. Yeah. And of and course, butter. a nice relish as well, like a nice mm. spicy tomato mm. relish yeah, for sure. pup, you know, yes. with that, like a voshi. You could flavor and the cumin or coriander or something like that, maybe yes. in the beginning as well. Yes. And nice. if you use it for a savory dish, oh, yeah, savory, put a yeah. braai yeah. of sweet. Right. Yeah. I know when my brother actually makes this, he puts in dollops of feta cheese. Mm. That could be that's quite interesting. nice. That's interesting, yeah, with that yeah, savory Yeah, make a bit of a flavor. savory kind of yeah. vibe mm. as well. All right, well, that's there you have it, cool. guys. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Absolute pleasure. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much for all your questions as well. Remember, if you have any questions, you can comment or post your questions on our Facebook page using that hashtag, Espresso Show. But from us here in the kitchen, that's a wrap of your culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting.